Man, writing AI is hard, and I'm not even done yet. Hi everyone, Steve here. Welcome back to another devlog of Fellow Chair, or as YouTube likes to subtitle it, Fellow Chair. In the last devlog, we left off at the modular track building and we're planning to dive into AI cars. So let's do that. Let's make some robots! This video is going to be more of a tutorial, but do trust me, I try to make it as entertaining as possible. Let's start with our problem and then let's see what I've done to make it work. So first off, I wanted to create an AI that drives the car around on a predetermined path. The first step for this was to assign an agent to the cars. This agent is basically a fancy word of saying what kind of inputs the car should listen to. As of right now, the car can listen to player, AI and network agents, but obviously the network is a long way off and I'm gonna be honest, the player agent's code is baked into the car right now. So this leaves us with the AI agent and most of the video is gonna be centered around this. And by most, I mean all of it. As I said earlier, I want the AI to drive the car around on the track. There are a couple of solutions for this with a varying degree of complexity, from simply following a predetermined path all the way to collecting data from actual racing drivers and using machine learning. I went with what's called a context-based steering and special thanks to KidScan Code for this awesome tutorial. But first, let's start with a simpler AI. When given a path, a very basic AI would try to do one thing, stay on track. But it seems like every guy should try to do this, this approach comes with a problem. What happens if the player gets into the way of the AI or shoves the AI off path? This is where context-based steering comes in. In a sense, context-based steering is not that hard, but it helps if you don't have a smooth brain like I do. With this steering behavior, we have a couple of building blocks that we need to use and understand. One of the most important of this is a raycast. Basically, a raycast is what it sounds like, a ray casted. This raycast checks for collisions in a given direction from a point. You might have heard of this in FPS games with raycast weapons. These raycast weapons, typically weapons with fast moving projectiles like assault rifles, cast out a ray towards the direction you're looking at and if this ray collides with an enemy, it gets damaged. To put it simply, a raycast is a fast method to check for collision in a straight line. For this model, I'm using 16 raycasts in all directions of the car. The other two pieces of the puzzle are two arrays, the interest and the danger array. The size of the arrays is the same as the number of raycasts we use, so essentially we have an interest and a danger value for each raycast. Setting up the interest array is quite a simple process. We take every raycast and create a dot product between the raycast direction and the target point we want to go to. Because we can think about the raycast endpoint and the target point as vectors from the car's position. But what's a dot product? A dot product takes two vectors and returns a number between minus one and one. It's basically the cosine of the angle between them. So it's minus one if the two vectors point in the opposite direction. The angle between them is 180 degrees. One if they point in the same direction. So the angle between them is zero degrees. And where the result of the dot product is zero, it's when the two vectors are perpendicular to one another. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. We count the values of the dot product between zero and one and we don't worry about going backwards. That's for losers. So let's imagine our goal is to go forward. Then after going through all the raycasts, we can have our interest array filled up like this. Now, if we multiply our raycast length with our interest array, remember, it's value between zero and one, we would have something like this. Let's calculate the danger array as well. This is that simple. If there's a collision registered from the raycast, set its value between zero and one based on the distance. If there isn't, set it to zero. Now all we have to do is subtract the danger values from the interest values and multiply our raycast with this new value, add together these raycast and voila! We have one vector that points to the target point and takes objects that can block its path into consideration. All that's left is to turn this vector into an angle in a similar way to the draft product before 
and feed it to the steering, put some pedal input into the mix and it's mostly done. To get the racing light, just put down a path node in Godot, uh, this has a curved 3D resource. Add some points to this resource and we're done with getting the racing line. Once the car is close enough to a point in the racing line, it changes the point target to the next point and we're pretty much done. The pedal input right now is calculated by the angle difference between where the car is pointing and where the target point is. If we're above a certain speed and the angle is too much, we brake and if it's almost zero, we are on full throttle. I still have to tweak this because currently this is not the best approach for fast turns. There's a couple of features that are still missing. Things that the player can do but the AI can't simpler but vital things like reversing, turning on or off the headlights or using the handbrakes. These are things that I keep working on through the development of the game as AI will no doubt need refinement as the development progresses. This is what most of my time last month was about and in the background you can see various amounts of struggling with this. In hindsight my biggest issue with this feature was my unfamiliarity with vectors and with local and global positions. I did a lot of other things as well but these are just a couple of tidbits that I haven't mentioned yet so once I have a video worth I'll create a new devlog about it. I also created a discord server that you can join should you be interested in the development of the game more. Click the link in the description below. In the next devlog we'll create our first race mode, time trial, and create a car select screen as well, so we can choose between the cars we wanna drive. So stay tuned for next time and until then, make sure to like, subscribe, share the video with your friends and smash that like button. See ya!